Whoa! Th the hell did you just come from? Man, that is so creepy. Uh, I mean, uh, welcome to my 100th video. In this exciting visual effects tutorial, I will show you... Um, I'll show you how you did that creepy thing with coming down from outer space right into my apartment. Uh, yeah, let's let's do that. I've been getting plenty of requests for some more advanced tutorials and therefore I decided to spend a little bit of extra time so that in this tutorial I can show you how to create this really cool effect of zooming all the way from outer space down through the atmosphere and the clouds down into the city and into my apartment. Now this is neither a simple nor a quick effect to create and therefore I have decided to break this tutorial up into five, yes, five separate parts. If you want to jump to any specific part in this tutorial series, just click on the corresponding video annotation over on the right hand side or down at the bottom and it'll take you straight to it. In this part, in part one, I'm going to show you how to use Cinema 4D to set up and render out all of the individual layers that we'll later on use in Adobe After Effects to create this really cinematic outer space sunrise over the earth scene. As I mentioned, this is going to be an unapologetically advanced tutorial. If using Adobe After Effects still makes your head spin a little bit or the thought of using a 3D package like Cinema 4D or 3DS Max makes your eyes twitch uncontrollably, I highly recommend you go check out some of my beginner and intermediate tutorials first before you try to get into this one. But before we drag this out any longer, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here we are with a brand new scene in Cinema 4D. What I'm going to show you here is not specific to Cinema 4D. You can create the same effects using 3ds Max, Maya, you can even use Element 3D and do all of this directly in Adobe After Effects. But whenever I work with more elaborate 3D scenes, I much prefer doing all of the 3D work in a dedicated 3D package like Cinema 4D, render it out and then just take the images into Adobe After Effects for the final composite. Let's get started creating the sunrise over the Earth. I downloaded this pack which contains a model and textures for planet Earth of TurboSquid.com. It was created by Michael Taylor and it costs absolutely nothing. Let's quickly unpack the zip file. Now this package actually contains a 3ds Max file and you're welcome to use that instead but all I really want are the texture files that you can find under the users Michael pictures folder. These are high resolution texture maps for planet Earth. You'll find a diffuse texture map, some clouds, city lights, bump map and even a specular map. Now let's jump back into Cinema 4D and get started creating planet Earth. Before we start creating the Earth and the Sun, let's first set up the project settings. Under the Output tab, let's first set the width and height to True HD at 1920 by 1080. Because I shoot all my footage at 24 frames per second, let's lower the frame rate down to 24. Under the Save tab, let's change the format to PNG, just because they're usually pretty small files and we are going to create quite a number of them, and let's specify an output path for our final render. I'm just going to create a new folder called Output and I'm going to rename the files to Sunrise over Earth. That should do for now. Close down the render settings and change the last frame of your project to frame 360. We do want quite a little bit of time to, you know, reveal the space and then slowly have the sunrise over the Earth before we zoom in. Now let's finally start creating the planets. First, let's create a simple sphere for the Earth. Because I'm a neat freak, I'm actually going to rename the sphere to Earth. Next, in the Material Editor, Click Create and let's create a new material. Let me quickly resize some of these panels so it's a little bit easier to see. Under the Color tab for this new material, click on the Texture tab. Then navigate to where you extracted the texture maps for Planet Earth to. Select the Diffuse map for Planet Earth and click Open. Cinema 4D is going to ask you whether you want to copy that file to your local project directory. Let's just say yes to that. And we have a texture with Planet Earth. Go to the Basic tab and enable both the specular color and the bump channels. Go over into the bump channel and again click on the Texture tab. This time we're going to select the bump texture for planet Earth. Again say yes. And we now have a bump map, you can't really see it in this little preview window, but planet Earth now has a little bit of a bump map assigned to it. Go over into the specular color channel and assign the specular texture map for planet Earth. Back over in the Material Editor I'm quickly going to rename this material to Earth. To apply this material to the sphere, simply drag it onto the sphere either in the Project Explorer or in your preview window. Let's zoom in a little bit and let's render this out with Ctrl R. And that actually looks quite nice. Now, 
I'm not a big fan of this massive specular highlight on planet Earth, so I'm going to go back into my materials and under the specular tab, I'm going to set the height to zero. Let's render this again. Yep, this to me looks a lot better. Next, let's create the sun. Create a new sphere. I'm going to rename this one to sun. And then let's move this away a little bit from the Earth. Now, my goal with Cinema 4D is just to create something that looks like a sun rising over planet Earth. I'm not trying to model the celestial bottles in, you know, realistic relative sizes and position them as far away as they need to be. I'm going to go the cheap way and I'm simply going to reduce the size of my sun to 0.2 meters. Let's rotate the camera around and yes, that actually looks kind of what I was envisioning this effect look. I just want a little small sun rising over the edge of planet Earth. Let's quickly create a material for the sun. Go over into your material editor, select create and new material. Go over into the color tab and let's tint this one nice and yellow. Next, go over into the basic channel and enable the luminance channel. In the luminance tab, let's change this to nice and yellow as well. The reason I'm enabling the luminance channel is because I want the sun to always be fully illuminated and to radiate light. I don't want it to be affected by the lights we're going to add into the scene later. Let's assign this material to the sun. This time I'm dragging it onto the sphere in the project explorer and let's render this out. Looks pretty cool. Let's rotate the camera a little bit so that it looks like the sun is just rising over the earth. Yep, cool, that is pretty much what I'm going for. Now, there are other layers, of course, that we want to render on the earth. One layer that I want to layer over planet earth is obviously a layer of clouds. For that, I'm going to select my earth sphere, go Ctrl C, Ctrl V to make a copy and I'm going to rename this one to clouds. Because I want the clouds to always be visible above the surface of the earth, I'm going to increase the radius of my cloud sphere. I just want to increase it by a little bit, so maybe we'll set it to 1.001 meters. Let's again create a new material and for the color under texture, this time we're going to select the Australia clouds map. Yes, we want to copy that. If you now assign this material to your cloud sphere and render this out, you will notice that the surface of the earth has actually vanished. That is because the texture of the cloud is black and white. It's opaque. It doesn't you know, have any transparency. Technically, we could add an alpha channel in Cinema 4D to this texture to make the planet Earth show through, but I will actually render out the clouds, the surface of the Earth and the city separately so I can composite them in Adobe After Effects. So the fact that the clouds are opaque doesn't really matter. The only thing that does matter is again, this ugly specular highlight, which I want to take out. So let's go back to the material go into the specular tab and let's lower the height to zero. Let's render this out and then this will be a really solid layer for our clouds. Also, it irks me that I haven't actually named these materials, so let's name this one clouds and let's rename the sun material to sun. The other thing I'm noticing is that my cloud sphere actually still has the earth texture assigned to it as well. We must select this tag and delete it. For now, let's disable the sphere with the clouds. Preview this and yep, we're back to planet earth and the sun. Let's create yet another sphere which contains all of the nice city night lights because I want to composite this into a really, really cool looking night shot and for that we will need another texture layer. I'm going to copy and paste the cloud sphere, rename this one to city lights and I'm going to enable the city lights. Right now the city light sphere still has the cloud texture assigned so again let's create a new material. Because we've had this before let's immediately go into the specular tab of the texture and lower the height to zero. Then go over into the color tab and for the texture, this time select the city 16K PNG texture map. And let's rename this texture to city lights and let's assign it to our city lights sphere and delete the clouds texture of it. If we render this out, well, I'm not sure you can see this. Maybe we'll zoom in a little bit more. This is actually a really cool texture map which contains all of the bright lights from the city on planet Earth. Again, we are going to render all of these city lights out in a separate render pass, so for now, you can just disable the city light sphere. Next, let's add the camera animation. Select planet Earth and press S on your keyboard to center it in the view of your camera. Then rotate your camera around to find a nice spot where you want to zoom in on planet Earth. Now, obviously, we want to end up in a city and right now we're kind of just facing the ocean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select planet Earth and I'm just going to change the rotation to rotate a piece of land directly in front of the camera. For this tutorial, let's pick Australia. So rotate Australia right in front of the camera. Move the camera really close in just before it's touching the surface of the Earth. This is the point where we will transition this scene from the space into the clouds and then down into the city. 
If you now preview this, you will notice that the texture map is getting kind of grainy, even though it is a pretty high resolution texture. This isn't actually that big a deal because the movement of the camera is going to be pretty fast. There's going to be a few other layers like the clouds and the city lights in the scene anyway. So you're not really going to notice the graininess too much, but obviously don't push it too far. Otherwise it's just going to be ugly and blocky. Now let's add and animate the camera. Go to the very end of your effect to frame 360 and then create a new camera. The camera will automatically take the current view of your preview camera. Enable the camera by clicking this little icon here down in the Project Explorer. And now we want to keyframe this camera at this position because this position is exactly where we want the camera to end at the very end of our project. So let's add a keyframe to the position of the camera. Let's go back to around frame 260 and with the active camera still selected, zoom out of the scene to the starting position of the camera. Around here looks fine to me. Again, let's add a keyframe to the position of the camera. I'm only adding the animation of the camera into the last quarter of my sequence. The reason I'm doing that is so that I have plenty of time at the very beginning to fade in on the scene, to have a really nice sunset and then slowly transition, zoom in with the camera and bang, hit right down on Australia. You may notice that the scene looks rather odd, something looks off and if you've paid any attention in high school, you will notice that planet Earth should be rotating. So let's add that into the mix. Let's go to the end of the composition because this is the rotational point where we want planet Earth to end. So we definitely want to make sure that we've got exactly this shot at the end of our sequence. Select planet Earth and just a horizontal rotation. Let's set a keyframe on that. Let's go back to frame zero and let's lower the rotation maybe by about 40. And let's set another keyframe. Now if we scrub through this, planet Earth is slowly rotating. Then the camera shoots in and hits Australia exactly at the time and the place where we want it to. Cool, that looks pretty good. Next, we will also have to make sure that both the clouds and the city lights rotate exactly the same way planet Earth does or things just won't align anymore. Let's first focus on the clouds. The reason I want to focus on the clouds first is because at this point right here, when the camera is hitting Australia, we want a big fat cloud to be right in the center of the screen. This will allow us to transition into a cloud scene and then seamlessly blend into the city shots. Re-enable the cloud sphere and for now let's disable the earth. Go back a little bit so we're zoomed out a little bit and let's preview this. Yeah, it's not too bad but I think I'd actually want the big clouds here over on the right hand side to be right in the center of the screen. So let's rotate the clouds for a little bit to bring this big block of clouds right into the center of the camera. Yep, about here should do. Let's zoom in again and let's preview this frame. Yeah, we're off just by a little bit, so maybe I'll adjust the rotation of the clouds here just by a tad. Yep, cool, that is much better. There's a big block of clouds now in the center of the screen. With this setup, let's now add some rotation to the cloud sphere so that it follows the rotation of the Earth. Select the cloud sphere and add a keyframe to the horizontal rotation. Go back to frame zero and rotate the cloud sphere 40 degrees towards the east, exactly the same amount we did for the Earth. Set another keyframe. And now if we rotate through, you can see the clouds rotate and we're hitting down just in time to catch this massive cloud right over Australia. Next, let's fix up the city lights. Disable the cloud layer and enable the city lights layer. The city lights actually need to align 100% with the Earth. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select my Earth sphere. That's at 37 degrees. Go to the city lights and I'm at the end of my sequence. So that is 37 degrees onto city lights. Let's do exactly the same here. Let's set a keyframe, let's go back to zero, at frame zero, Earth is rotated minus six degrees, so the city lights should be minus six degrees as well. Let's set another keyframe. But you can see, if you know, this is actually the shape of Australia. And we're hitting right down here at the Bay of Melbourne. Go back to the beginning of your project and disable the visibility on the city light sphere. Enable the Earth again, so we're back to where we started. Next, let's focus on creating the sunrise effect. The two things we need to do is we need to animate the sun to appear over the edge of the earth and then we need to add some light into the scene to make it appear like there's actually light spilling over the edge of the earth just as the sun appears. Select the sun and position it just behind the edge of the earth where you want it to appear. Let's go forward to about frame 60 and let's keyframe the position of the sun then I really want a fairly slow sunrise, so maybe we'll go to up to about frame 240. Let's keyframe the sun again 
and let's position it, let's drag it out so like it had just risen over the edge of the earth, uh, just about here. Um, actually, let's rekey those positions on the sun. Let's go back a little bit and play the sequence back. And you will see the sun slowly rise over the edge of the earth. And then the camera zooms into the earth, coming down right on Australia. Next, let's add some light into the scene. Create a new standard light and let's call this one sunlight. Let's move this off to the side of the earth here. So about there where the sun is rising. You will notice that I'm not actually positioning this light directly where the sun is because otherwise you'd really just see the very edge of the earth and while that might be more realistic, it just doesn't look quite as cool. You may notice that I've accidentally moved the light off the edge of my preview window. Before you start moving the camera around to reposition it so you can see the light, make sure you disable the camera that you have in your scene. Otherwise, any changes you make to the position of the camera in your preview window will actually impact the position of the camera object in your scene. Let's push this light back and up a little bit. I really just want a little bit of light falling over the edge of the earth, just where the sun is rising. Let's quickly center off the earth, zoom out a little bit so I get a little bit of a view of what the actual camera will see, just so I can kind of gauge how the light is affecting the earth. Let's select the light and let's animate it to basically start illuminating this side of the earth just as the sun is rising. Let's go back to maybe about frame, uh, maybe we'll start about here, just before the sun comes up I want to start seeing a little bit of light. Maybe go to about frame 50, let's move this light back and away so there's no light at all on the edge of the earth. Let's set a keyframe on the light. Let's move forward to about frame 240 once the sun is fully visible. Let's move this light forward again so that you kind of got this. It looks like the sun is illuminating the edge of the earth just as it's rising. Maybe about that much. I don't want to overdo it, but I do want quite a bit of light on the edge of the earth. About here seems right. Let's add some more keyframes to the light. And if you scrub through your sequence, you can see the light appear just as the sun rises, which actually looks pretty cool. Hmm, I find there's a bit too much of the sun visible over the edge of the earth. It kind of looks a little bit weird. So maybe let's go back to frame 240. Let's reselect the sun sphere and let's move it in a little bit so it's a little bit more hidden behind the edge of the earth. Yep, about here seems a little bit more natural-ish. And then let's re-keyframe the position of the sun. Cool. I think this looks a lot better. This looks a lot more natural and it's just not... The sun doesn't stand out like a weird blobby shape along the side of the earth. If you preview this, you will notice that even though the sun is yellow, the edge of the earth is illuminated by white light. Let's quickly change the color of our sunlight. In the general tab for the light, simply change this color to be nice and yellow, similar to the color of the sun. Let's preview this again. And this looks a whole lot better. It just looks a little bit more realistic in the color of the sun. Next, because we only have one light in our scene, the rest of the earth is entirely dark. And I don't think that actually looks quite good. I still want to see a little bit of the shape, a little bit of the land and a little bit of the clouds. So I'm going to add an ambient light into my shot. Let's add a new light. The type doesn't really matter, but just to be able to tell them apart, I will choose the infinite light. Quickly rename this light to ambient and then in the light settings, enable the ambient illumination option. If you render this out, you can see that this new light indeed illuminates all parts of our scene equally, the way a good ambient light should. Of course, right now it's way too bright, so let's bring down the intensity to maybe around 6%. Let's preview this. Much better, I can just make out the shape of the earth. In order to emphasize the scene getting brighter as the sun rises, let's also animate the intensity of this ambient light to get a little bit stronger just as the sun appears. Go back to frame, maybe 100, 110, and let's keyframe the intensity of this ambient light at 6%. Then move forward to frame 240 when the sun has fully risen, and let's increase the intensity to maybe just 8%, 10%. I don't want to go too bright, just a tiny bit of increase in ambient light. Add another keyframe and let's render this out. It's subtle, but the increase in ambient light will add to the final effect. Now we're finally finished with the setup of our scene. Let's switch back to our active camera, enable the camera. So this is the final shot we are getting. Uh oh, I've noticed that I've actually changed the position of the sun while I was in my preview camera and not in the final camera. Um, so the sun does not poke out very much anymore. Let's quickly reposition the beginning and the end keyframe of the sun. So we've got it rising nicely over the edge of the earth. And let's play back the sequence. I think I've got it fixed up properly. Cool, that looks really good. Let's finally get to the rendering. 
Now, the rendering itself is going to be a little bit involved because we're not just going to render one little image. We are actually going to render lots of different passes, lots of different pieces of this scene separately so that we get a lot more control over how we're going to composite all of these elements together in Adobe After Effects. So let's go into the render settings and set this up. First, enable the multipass because I do want to render out quite a few different layers. Then right click onto multipass and select the illumination pass. This will render out only the brightness channel of the earth as it is being lit by the different lights in our scene. Next, I do want to work with the sun and the earth independently, so I am going to render them out into different object buffers. Click on multipass and add an object buffer. This one can remain on group ID 1. And let's rename this object buffer to object buffer earth. Let's add yet another object buffer to this multipass. Make sure you increase the group to 2, otherwise they're going to be writing to exactly the same channel. And let's rename this object buffer to object buffer sun. Obviously, we also want to save all the outputs for this multipass, so go over into your save tab. Make sure the multipass image output is enabled and change the format over to PNG. For the output path, let's use the same output path as for our beauty pass, but let's maybe change the file name to multipass. Next, and this is mainly important for the city lights layer that we are going to render, go over into the anti-aliasing options and change anti-aliasing from geometry to best. Then change the min level to 4x4 and the max level to 8x8. Because the city lights texture map is a really high resolution texture with some really really small highlights, if you don't use anti-aliasing, the texture is going to flicker in the final render output. Let's close down the render settings and let's link the earth and the sun to their respective object buffers. In Cinema 4D, in order to output an object in your scene into a specific object buffer, you need to use the compositing tag. You can assign this tag if you select the object in your project explorer, right click it and then under Cinema 4D tags you will find the compositing tag. In the compositing tag settings you will find an object buffer tab. And in here you can enable object buffer 1 which is our object buffer earth. Note that this ID is actually the group ID for the object buffer and that is why it was important that both of our object buffer for the sun and the earth have different IDs. Let's do the same for the sun. Select it in your project explorer, right click it and then go to Cinema 4D tags and compositing. In this tag we're going to enable object buffer 2 so the sun will write into a different object buffer from the earth. So if you're getting a little bit confused about what all of these passes are, let's render this in the picture viewer which will actually show us the separate passes. Here's my full scene, this is called the beauty pass which is basically the entire render. In the layers tab you can actually see the individual layers from your multi pass. The illumination layer just contains the illumination from the lights on the objects. Object buffer 1 is the object buffer for our earth, so you can see there's no sun up here, it's just the shape of the earth in black and white. And object buffer 2 is just the sun. So these two can be used as track mats in Adobe After Effects to extract the earth or just the sun from your image. Before I hit render I'm actually going to go back into my render settings and I'm going to disable the output of the illumination pass. The reason I'm doing that is because the texture for planet earth contains a bump map channel and that bump map channel is included in the illumination pass and it makes it a little bit uneven. I want my illumination pass to be nice and smooth so I'm going to render that out separately afterwards and disable it for now. The other thing I also want to make sure is that I go into the output tab and obviously make sure that I'm exporting all frames from frame 0 to 360 and I'm going to output my beauty pass and under multi pass I've got the object buffer earth and the object buffer sun. Let's close this down and let's render the entire sequence. I'm going to take a quick break and come back when the rendering is done. So that's the first part rendered which gives us the beauty pass as well as the object buffer 1 and object buffer 2. Go back into the render settings and disable the object buffer for the sun and the earth. Let's render out the illumination pass. Go back to the save tab and because we've already rendered out the beauty pass we no longer need this one so we can actually disable the regular output. We're really just interested in the illumination multi pass at this point. Close down the render settings and one thing I am going to temporarily do to render this out is I'm going to take away the texture from the earth. I'm just going to assign it to the clouds for now which is disabled. So if you now preview this you can see this is actually nice and smooth. There's no more bump mapping going on and this is going to be my illumination pass. Let's render this one out in the picture viewer. And done. The next two layers we are going to render is the clouds layer and the city lights. For that let's assign the earth texture back to the earth and then enable the cloud sphere again. Let's disable the earth. So now if we render this out 
All we get is the clouds. We also don't need the sun. So let's disable the sun as well. All I want is really just the layer of the clouds, which we are going to composite in Adobe After Effects. Go back into the render settings and in the save output. Let's re-enable the beauty pass output, but let's call this something else because we don't want to override our sunrise over earth. Let's call this one clouds. And we no longer need the multipass, so we can actually disable that output. We can also disable the multipass on the left hand side because we no longer need it. Let's close down the render settings and this time we are just going to render the clouds layer. Let's render that in the picture viewer. Cool, and that's our clouds layer rendered. Next, let's render the city lights. For this, disable the cloud sphere and enable the city light sphere. Let's move forward a little bit and preview this. You will notice that the city light sphere is actually impacted by the lights. So you don't see all of the nice night light city lights. You only see them where the sun is hitting that sphere. That's not what we want. And the easiest way to get around this is simply to disable the lights in your scene. If you now preview this, you've got all of the nice city lights on the city light sphere. Before we render this out, because this is going to be another beauty pass, go over into the render settings and let's change this output name from clouds to city lights and render it in the picture viewer. And with that, we're done with Cinema 4D. To recap, we have rendered out individual layers for our beauty pass, an object buffer for the earth, an object buffer for the sun, an illumination pass, a cloud layer pass, and a city lights pass. Now you may feel that this is total overkill, but I guarantee that all of these layers will come in really handy once we get to compositing everything together inside of Adobe After Effects. And that's all this to uh, part one. In the next part, in part two, we will take all of the layers we rendered out from Cinema 4D or whichever 3D package you used and composite them inside of Adobe After Effects into a really cool looking outer space sunrise over the earth scene. I really hope you enjoyed the first part of this tutorial series. As always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I would also greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. If you want to get in contact or simply stay up to date with what is happening with Surface Studio, you can also find and follow me on Facebook, Twitter or on Google+. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.